just glad to thank BCCA organizers for the invitation to speak here. And let me uh, share screen now. And the title of my presentation is Neural Spectral Spatial Filter. I'm uh, from Ohio State University, directing the perception and neurodynamics laboratory there. Thank you. So this is the outline of my presentation. First, I'll introduce the background of this study, in particular, mask and base beam forming. And I'll present complex spectrum mapping approach to speech gear liberation. And finally, I'll be presenting the main theme of this talk, which is neurospectral spatial filter. We all know that beam forming is widely used, it's decades old multi-channel processing methodology or spatial filtering. And for spatial filtering, it's a beam forming term will suggest that we didn't know which direction the target source comes from is for steering purposes. The target direction is also known as the steering vector. To figure out steering vector, we need to rely on so-called direction of arrival estimation for the target source. And that's typically conducted through sound localization. A source localization in the reverberant multi-source environments itself is very difficult. And for human audition, it's not even clear localization should precede source separation. Actually, evidence, perceptual evidence would suggest that localization seems to depend instead on source separation. So mask offensive beam forming is a relatively recent idea in this long history of beam forming development. The idea here is that we use a time previous mask to guide beam forming. And supervised so masking helps in two ways. First, to specify what the target source is. This is done through, as I said, supervised learning, where you can tell the system what the target source is whether it's a speech signal or it's a music source, for example. Masking further help to separate or suppress interference sound sources. That's where really time with masking was originally proposed for. So let me explain this idea a little bit further because this is going to be utilized later. Let's take the perhaps most widely used beamformer as an example, which is NVIDIA beamformer. NVIDIA stands for Minimum Variance Distortionist Response. And the purpose of this beam form is to minimize the noise energy coming from non-target directions or coming from directions that are not corresponding to the steering vector while maintaining the signal coming from a target direction. And if I write on the signal model as follows. So we have the array recording that corresponds to Y, Y and I. It's, it's a vector indicated by four phase. And this is a vector of, of sensors of a vector of microphones. And we represent it high frequency domain. So the basic unit is a TF high frequency unit. And it has two components. One is the target source. The target source is indicated by S, S of TF. And this, if you do speech digital operation, the target signal would be the direct path signal or the dry source signal. And let's modify with the vector C. C is the steering vector of the array. And that gives you the received speech signal by the array itself. And of course, we also have a background noise. So this is the N itself is the spatial vector of the background noise. And because the media beam forming corresponds to quadratic optimization with a constraint, and this actually can be uh, solved through quadratic optimization technique. And 
Sasha, we need to figure out a wave vector that minimizes this term. And the middle of this term is phi sub n, phi sub n is the spatial covariance symmetry of the noise. And we want to minimize this corresponding to minimizing the noise, total noise energy, but the subject will constrain that in the steering vector direction, C, we want no processing, no distortion. So that's corresponding to the inner product of the wave vector. And this wave vector needs to be trans needs to be transposed in the complex domain that correspond to conjugate transpose. And that multiplication corresponds to one. So that's the constraint we want to satisfy. Now the minimization of the output power is the same as minimization of the noise power because of the distortions constraint. Then we can solve this. And through this term, and this term has essentially two things in it. One is the noise covariance matrix, which is phi sub n, and the other one is the steering vector. So once the beamforming vector is solved, then beamforming corresponds to, again, the inner product of the wave vector and the array reporting, which is y. y is a key. And that gives us the estimate of the target signal, which is S hat of T. So it boils down to essentially uh, accurate estimation of the steering vector, as I said already, it's about vocalization and the noise covariance matrix estimation. Furthermore, furthermore, we know that C corresponds to the principal eigenvector of the target covariance matrix. And if speech and noise are uncorrelated as they typically are, then we can, we have this relation, which is that the target covariance matrix is the mixture covariance matrix subtracted by the noise covariance matrix. So further, we can basically say that it really is a single estimate, which the noise estimate is crucial for the informing performance. And it's just like traditional speech enhancement or single channel speech suppression, where then the background noise estimation is key. So when you have a time frequency mask that indicates the target signal in the time frequency representation, then it provides a way of, of more accurately estimating the covariance metrics of the noise. And this is done through two seminal studies was published in 2016. And Heimer uses recurrent neural network to estimate the monoral ideal binary mask or IBM. Higuchi et al. computes a racial mask using special, uh, spatial clustering. So the idea is that this is illustrated here that you have an array recording and you first perform single channel uh, signal enhancement through a time previous mask compute time to mass in each of the microphone recordings. Then you find a way to combine the masks and that mask, either multiple mask or single combined mask, will provide the information for computing noise covariance metrics in the NVIDIA beamforming. Now, if the noise separation is not done completely, one can apply to do time to masking one more time and you use the same time to mask as a post-processing step or the post-fit, and that gives us the final output. A mask-based beamforming is responsible for large amount of improvements in two open evaluation challenges called CHIME 3 and CHIME 4, and this results in much better than traditional beamforming. And I think it's fair to say that mask-based beamforming represents a major advance in beamforming development, particularly for beamforming-based multi-channel uh, automatic speech recognition. So let me move to the second part of my talk, which is complex spectral mapping approach to speech deliberation. So. Three years we will publish a study which is to use complex spectrum mapping to perform multi channel 
speech digital operation. This study is based on the strategy of target cancellation. And one nice property of this approach is a single channel key reverberation is not treated as a special case of multi channel key reverberation. I think people in this audience know that reverberation corresponds to obviously reflections in the enclosed space. And it's illustrated here, you have a speaker that utters a speech signal, and you have a microphone way here that there's a direct pass signal. That's what we like to obtain, but there are infinite number of reflections that also get recorded. And for the reverberation, we also need to consider diffuse background noise, which is illustrated here. A single model for reverberant noise and speech enhancement uh, can be formulated in a similar way as we just introduced. Now, the difference is that we actually want to designate one of the microphones as a reference microphone, and this is indicated by Q. So the first term, this is the total recording of the array, which is Y, and we represent them in the STF key domain or short time Fourier transform domain. And the first term corresponds to the essentially the recorded signals of the recorded microphone array signal of the target speech. And the second term H, H corresponds to the reverberated versions of the target signal. Since we're doing digital operation, we want to remove them. So that's in the units as well. The third term, which is N, N corresponds to the reverberant background noise. So if we do speech deliberation and denoising, now we'd like to remove both of them. So we combine it H and N together to form a term which is a V. So essentially the array recording has two terms in it. One is the, the speech, the target signal. Second one is the interference signal. So what is complex structural network approach? This is based on realization of the phase relations of a sound source between multiple microphones, obviously in core spatial characteristics. Phase is extremely important, obviously, for spatial processing. And we think the complex spectral mapping is a natural approach to represent signal phase um, in addition to magnitude. So we're doing spectral mapping, but doing spectral mapping in a complex domain. And this boils down to employing a, say, a deep neural network to predict a real and imaginary pulse of the direct sound from the corresponding noisy and reverberant mixtures. And this is based on the earlier work that formulates complex domain processing using a real value deep neural network. Essentially, uh, we perform deep noising and reverberation on the real spectral spectrogram and imaginary spectrogram together. And if we handle the imaginary unit properly, uh, we do not actually lose any information, even though you have a real value deep neural network to perform complex domain processing. So the target concentration strategy is as I said, we first perform speech reverberation in individual channels. So you have P channels here, and each of the P channels goes through, the recordings go through a single channel speech D reverberation. But the nice thing here that even though it is done multiple times, we use actually the same, the same neural network to do the same thing, to do multi-channel process, but done individually. Then we have the initially D reverberated signals as head, one, so S and P, then we send them to MBDRP informer. And MBDRP informer will then give us an estimate of the target signal, which is a single channel. But instead of taking this as the final output, the difference, the key here is that we're doing actually target cancellation. We actually take this as the uh, estimate of target signal, but then we find the difference between the mixture signal, which is the Y's of Q, Subtract by BFQ here, and that gives us 
the estimate of non-target signals. So with that estimate together with the mixture signal, we then perform de-reverberation de second time using a multi-channel de-reverberation network, and that gives us the output of SQ2 hat. So if we have a single channel, so the task of complex spectrum mapping can be formulated as follows. We want to predict SQ. This Q is the reference microphone. Based on the microphone recording is YQ. And the loss functions are going to be formulated in the real and imaginary domain, the RI domain. This is simply the difference between the target signals, the real component, and estimated target signal real component. And this is the L1 norm plus the, the imaginary components of the target signal and the estimate target signal. Compared to earlier work that is performing enhancement in the real and imaginary domain, we have added a magnitude term. So this is the first is the loss function, which is L of Ri. We also add a second term, which is nothing but the magnitude domain, which is the absolute value of SQ, and this is its estimate. And we found this actually the inclusion of a magnitude loss lead, leads to much better speech quality, and essentially reflecting the relative importance of magnitude over phase. So for MVP, MVDR beam form now, we now have the estimated target source signal. We actually, we can directly estimate the target covariance metrics, spatial covariance metrics, which is perform the outer product of the estimated vectors. And that gives us fees vas. Uh, with fees vas, we know that the the interference signal is nothing but the mixture signal subtracted by the target signal or estimate target signal. So with V estimated, we can then calculate the interference covariance metrics as this formula suggests. And note that this is actually very different from mask based beam formula, because mask based beam formula applies a real value of S to mixture signals. Here we directly estimate target signals and calculate target source covariance metrics. So with the covariance metrics is calculated, then the figuring out steering vector is straightforward as we already described. This is nothing but the taking the estimated target signal covariance metrics, find the principal eigenvector, and the rest of them uh, is done in the similar fashion. Now let's do the irreversion. So the deliberation, we feed the RI parts of the YQ minus BFQ, as well as the RI parts of the YQ to the second DN to estimate the real and imaginary parts of the target signal. So this term corresponds, as we said, field reversion for all non-target signals. Uh, if you have an accurate beamformer, the term actually is very close to VQ. VQ is a combination of reverberant versions of the target plus background noise. And now why do we do this? Why don't, why don't we take the informing output as the final result? It's because without this term, actually, DM may actually confuse a direct pass signal, which is one with one cap, and its reverberated versions. This is the ones that correspond to the echoes of the pass. So we can view the second team as a possible. So this algorithm was evaluated on a rework challenge, which is like an open challenge evaluations. And systems are trained on simulated mean positive response functions. And the speech corpus is WSJ camp zero, it's essentially all speech channel utterances. Uh, I think it's a British uh, accent with British accent. And we then evaluate the train models without retraining key here, without retraining and the rebuild challenge data sets. And it has 
both a simulated version as well as the recorded version. Even the simulated version actually uses measured domain pass response functions. So array is a standard uh, A microphone circular array, and T60 values range from 0.25 to 0.7 seconds. And speaker to array distance range, ranges from 0.5 to 2.5 meters. And the background noise is air conditioning noise. And we chose two baselines for comparison. Both are based on WP method. WP stands for weighted prediction error method. And we also evaluate or compare with the WP combined with uh, further beam point. So these are the regression results on the rework challenge data set. And the multiple metrics on simulated data, and including capture distance and log likelihood ratio or LLR for these two, met two metrics, two metric two measures that the smaller numbers represent better performance. We also have frequency weighted segmental SNR, uh, which is commonly used for measuring uh, digital regression performance, as well as PANS for speech quality evaluations. As you can see here, that uh, all the evaluation metrics, all the evaluation metrics, including even uh, the real recorded data, where the metrics, the metric is SRMR. This is a called a non-invasive metric. It stands for speech to reverberation modulation energy ratio. And if you have a single channel, then you don't need to have, um, there's no point of performing a single channel possible things. So we take the first stage output as the final result. If you have more than one microphones, if you have a ray processing, then we take the second stage or the uh, post filter output as the result. And in all cases, compared to WP and WP combined with traditional beam pointing or BM based beam pointing, that improvements are substantial in all cases. For example, if you look at the task numbers, there's eight microphones, our algorithm achieves 3.7 compared to unprocessed 3.2.37. And the best result from WP versions is the last one, the WP combined with a DM based beam folder and that gives 3.2. So the improvements is 0.5 also. So if I, uh, in terms of pass, is a very large amount of improvement. It's further evaluated on ASR results and the evaluated on both single channel, two channel, and eight channel results. And again, this reflects a, a large amount of improvements over unprocessed. If you look at the A channel, uh, the world error rate is essentially six percent compared to unprocessed, which is twelve percent. The best WP version, which gives eight point five percent. So world error rate results are also much better than the baselines. Actually, these results represented. When the paper was published, they represent the best results on the revoke challenge test sets. Let me play a sound demo to illustrate the results of speech to revolution. Let's see here. So this is a, a noisy reverberant mixture. The plan will give shareholders one right for each share held on May 17th. And this is the result from single channel WP algorithm. The plan will give shareholders one right for each share held on May 17th. I think that the amount of reverberation is somewhat reduced, but clearly not. Um, not by a large extent. If you listen to a single channel complex spectrum mapping result. The plan will give shareholders one right for each share held on May 17th. This comes through that is a very clear improvement. 
I think have eight channels, the results will be even better. The plan will give shareholders one right for each share held on May 17th. Back to the presentation, there's a point here. Now let's come to the, um, the last part of my talk, which is neurospectral spatial filter. So with a fixed array with stable spatial relations, so key question, do we actually need a beam form? Even though the previous result was achieved with a beam form in the middle, and is it necessary? So in other words, come out channel complex spatial mapping, itself fully utilized both spectral and spatial cues? The answer we believe is yes, because all discriminative features are already contained in the multi-channel complex spectral variance of mixed signal. So the, the input contains all the information that's needed and the complex representation in multi-channel complex spectral mapping naturally encodes in the channel phase relations. And it, very important property is that single channel processing is by definition a special case. And it boils down to letting deep learning figure out the most discriminative spectral and spatial features for performing a particular task. And this style of processing, we call it neural spectral spatial filtering. And that was the topic of the long paper published last year. This can be illustrated by this diagram here. We have multi-channel recording as the input. We first perform STFT analysis. That gives us complex spectral grams. And if you have P channels, now it's going to have P spectral grams. And the simplest way of utilizing multi-channel input is to concatenate them together, not doing anything else. Just just combine them together in a straightforward manner. That becomes an input to a DN, and a DN then is trained to produce whatever the output you want to. In this case, you want to produce uh, the direct pass, direct path um, speech signal as the output, then it's going to be SQ estimate. That's the result of the DN processing. And with this, because the Results are in the complex domain. We can then utilize inverse STFT to produce the waveform output as the final outcome of multi-channel complex version of So this is a all your approach. It's conceptually very simple. Multiple channels just simply provide you multiple inputs. And it's also computationally efficient because we're not doing single channel processing at all, which is single channel just produces, single channel just produces a feature. If you have multiple channels, if you have multiple features combined, you have single channel, the feature is already there. And there's no need for post-processing. And how does such a simple technique or simple approach perform? compared to more sophisticated combinations of beamforming and deep learning. We have systematically evaluated on um, several array configurations with uh, the simplest ones, two channel linear array with then the A channel linear array and the seven channel circular array, which resembles the array layout of Amazon Echo. In this extensive evaluations, we compare with not only traditional pinpointing techniques, but also mask-based pinpointing, as well as the complex spectrum mapping-based pinpointing. So much time. And for traditional pinpointing, we provide uh, 
target direction to the delay sound beam bombers, fixed beam bomber, or pre-mixed target interference signals or covariance metrics calculations in the adaptive, adaptive beam bomber of MVDO. And we also evaluate whether the cost filter should be added. And the DNA architecture we employ for performing complex spectrum mapping is called DCCRM or densely connected convolutional recurrent network. It has an encoder component and a decoder component together forms a U-shaped architecture. In between, there's a bottleneck layer, not a recurrent neural network. And from a corresponding encoder layer to a corresponding to a decoder layer, there's a skip connections. And this are also called this are also called conv, convolutional, convolutional densely connected block. So you have multi-channel inputs come in, concordinate the features together. At the end of the decoding pathway, we produce a real component, an imaginary component combined together uh, through inverse STFT produces, as I said, the waypoint output. For speech T reverberation, um, there's a lot of results. Let me just focus on one part of it, one array, which is a linear array. And the evaluation metrics are PASC for speech quality and scale invariant as now. And compared to the unprocessed, PASC number is 2.24 with the best the best beamforming combined with deep learning approach, which is the CSM based time invariant MVDR. And the CSM, CSM is performed by densely connected CRN neural network. And there's also a post filter process, processing added to it. So, altogether, it's actually a very large amount of improvement when it's going from 2.24 to 3.4. Five seven, and this result is very similar, so slightly, very slightly better than the approach that we are advocating, which is just performing multi-channel complex spectrum mapping using DCCR network. So it is three point five seven compared to three point five five. In terms of SR, SI, SNR, the results also very comparable, except that multi-channel CSM produces slightly better results. And for speech enhancement, we use, of course, our diffuse noise. And we look at a linear H and array and very similar story, which is that the best combination of deep learning with beamforming is the results are very comparable with simply multi-channel complex training. And if you compare single channel and multi-channel processing, the results are also very consistent. For single channel, the results are very decent. So the story improvements of CSM compared to unprocessed is already 22.4 percentage points. And if you have two channels, the results are going to be increased from 22% to 27 or 28%. If you have eight channels, that's further improved to 32%. So in other words, single channel processing produce Produces the expected model enhancement results on the same array layout, all channels consistent with performance as, as you would expect, because now uh, input features are more distributed. So, for interim summary, um, post filtering substantially elevates the input results based on tabulated masking and CSM. In terms of neural network architectures, DCCR clearly outperforms bidirectional LSTM. Traditional beamform, even with or equal spatial information provided, is not competitive at all. And spectral spatial, spectral spatial filtering using multi-channel CSM gives competitive results compared to the best uh, combination beamform post filtering and deep learning.
So here is the another sound demo before I conclude. This is a channel speech enhancement with quasi diffuse noise added at minus five dB. Listen to the unprocessed signal here. But sometimes there's very little difference. Probably hard to make out the speech signal itself. And let's see if I want, if you just look at mask based people, okay, and using TCCN as the underlying neural network architecture for temporary masking, this is the result. The Monsanto spokesman said, there's very little we can say. Uh, reduction of background noise as well as uh, reverberation. And if you look, listen now to the output of multi channel of complex spectrum mapping. The Monsanto spokesman said, there's very little we can say. Uh, this is actually very hard to, it's hard to distinguish between the output and the clean signal itself. The Monsanto spokesman said, there's very little we can say. All right, to summarize, I have presented a spectral, spatial filtering approach for multi-channel speech enhancement, as well as speech digital vibration and speaker separation, which is a topic uh, I did not have time to cover, but it actually was studied in the papers I just mentioned. And multi-channel complex spectrum mapping is conceptually simple, computationally efficient, and effective approach. And one characteristic I particularly like is that multi-channel CSM reduces single channel, mono CSM, if the input is only single microphone recording. So in other words, this approach treats multi-channel and single channel processing truly in exactly the same way. I think this resembles the characteristics of human audition. And at the high level, the approach reflects the uh, strategies that we want deep learning to discover most discriminant also distributive spectral and spatial field features to perform speech separation tasks. We're not encoding anything. We're not uh, including beamforming or other spatial filtering techniques in the middle. Just let uh, supervised learning to discover what are the features that are the most effective to the task. And with that, I thank you for your attention.